When I tell people I play Smash Bros a lot for my job, often people who know just a little bit about the game will ask me who I play. And I'll say I play mostly Pikachu and Ganondorf. And the responses I get are pretty varied, but often I'll get something along the lines of, uh, Ooh, Ganondorf. He's really strong, right? And I'm like, what? Ganondorf's one of the worst characters in the game at a high level, but in more casual play, he's considered kinda OP. And that got me thinking, what's the deal with Evies? Uh, Ganondorf is the worst character, to, uh, to no one's surprise. And of course, the worst character in the game, definitively, Ganondorf. Ganondorf sucks. Heavies. We love them. No, no, not that one. Heavies. They're fun to fight ass, and they're fun to play against. Oh, and they also get the most screen time on Smash YouTube, by far. There's just something so satisfying about killing someone at 10%, but it's also a great time getting to do combos on someone that should probably never work because, uh, of Donkey Kong, I guess. You live for a long time because you're thick as hell, and it means you can always make a comeback. It seems like everyone in competitive Smash has at least a guilty pleasure pocket heavy that's way better than it has any right to be. They're fun, they're strong, and they're popular, so why do we never see these characters in tournaments? I mean, you, you do see them in tournaments, but more often they're played by the people paying the bills of the people that win and going 0-2. I mean, you never see them in top 8s of huge tournaments with top players. Why do the characters that appeal so much to new players fall off so badly? L plus ratio. For almost every single character with a high weight stat, the better you are at the game, the worse they tend to get. And this is an inherent balance problem. When you get better at a character, you want to feel rewarded. You, you want to think that your hundreds or thousands of hours you've invested into the game has some value, aside from making your wife leave you. But with heavies, you might end up saying, God, this character was just way more fun when I just had 2 million GSP. Uh, this is not really something you want your players to be saying. Now, I don't think the heavies aren't fun when you optimize them, but I am saying that as your opponent gets better, you start to encounter some serious problems with the characters. So Smash Ultimate has a heavy problem, but why? Well, it comes to something that is perhaps the best and the worst part about Smash when you compare it to any other fighting game, and that's that Smash is accessible. Personally, I got into competitive with having zero fighting game experience. Can you tell from my Kazuya gameplay? And that's because this game is insanely fun as a completely casual game, and it's addictive from the very first time you ever pick it up. If you know zero combos, if you don't even know what a grab is, if you don't know where the shield button is, it doesn't matter. You'll find that one move you think is broken and just spam it until your friends are all pissed off at you. That's how I played for years and years before trying to take it to the next level. Accessibility is a really underrated thing in games, and it's super easy to look down on the casual aspects of a game. But like I said, it's so important. I personally have only ever played two games competitively ever, Smash Bros and Team Fortress 2, which is probably one of the most accessible first person shooters ever made. I never set out with plans to play these games seriously, but it just happened because I enjoyed playing them so much that I got better. Having a casual side is like a bridge for players like myself who wouldn't have considered themselves serious gamers, but then they got a bit more into it and I think that's huge. But this comes with problems, especially for balance, as you're essentially balancing two games at once, the casual meta and the competitive meta, and they can be very different. So this brings us back to heavies. Heavies hit hard. In the chaos that's casual play, they're gonna hit you and it's gonna hurt. They also survive all the stray hits that fly around for a long time, whether this might be items, assist trophies, Pokemon, even final smashes. Sure, you might have bad mobility, but it doesn't really matter when you're sitting still, spamming giant smash stacks and just hoping that they hit someone. Heavies for completely casual play are amazing. Top tier, if anyone ever bothered to make a tier list about these characters. Heavies in Smash also typically have really bad recovery moves, which again, in casual, isn't going to come into play too often. The inherent weaknesses of being big and slow just don't seem to apply so much. In competitive play, however, heavies just get bullied. Against a very, very good player, you feel like you don't even get a turn to play sometimes, and it can just be a miserable experience. Heavies can do well when you get a couple of hits, but you'll only get a chance to do this maybe once or twice a match. Being slow, having a weak recovery, and being big all combined just make a complete death sentence in a fast-paced game. If you ever do win, either your opponent messed up because they were scared of you, or you pulled off some amazing reads. 
and that's part of why there are so few heavy players in top play. Not only are you at a disadvantage from the very get-go of the game, but you're also very inconsistent. Sure, you may win one time, but your opponent just has to go home, do a little research, and not make the same mistakes in the runback. I have just a huge respect for the few top heavy players because the mental strength required to endure this pain is either very admirable or scarily masochistic. So this is where balancing the heavies gets hard. If we just make the heavies stronger so they can compete at a high level, they're not going to be fun to play against casually. So are we just doomed to always have bad heavies? Well, this is where we get a bit creative. There are ways to buff a character that might affect one mode of play more than another. And Smash Bros has actually tried a few of these before, with varying degrees of success. I'm going to talk about a few things that have been done in the past, as well as my own ideas on how we can make heavies more viable while keeping them fun and balanced for casual. Smash for the Wii U was a strange game. It was the first Smash game that had ongoing balance patches through its lifespan, so the developers actually did have a chance to make heavies more viable for once. And they did so in a way that actually did barely affect casual play with the dreaded Ding Dong combo. And also the Bow Wow or the, or the Coup Pa. Whatever you want to call Bowser's one. It never really had a name that stuck. Anyway, in a patch, they changed these up throws for DK and Bowser to not send people very far away and to also have a lot of hits done. The result of this was inescapable up throw up air kills. The timing on these was actually reasonably tight and it only worked at specific percents which was different for every character. So unless you were a sweat, you weren't going to find these out on your own. Therefore, as I said, it didn't really affect casual play very much, if at all. And yeah, I, I guess it was success because it made DK and Bowser more viable. They sat a solid mid-tiers compared to the other heavies at the very bottom, but this was at a pretty brutal cost. Getting ding-donged is absolutely zero fun, and it was so good that it over-centralized the character. As a DK or Bowser player, you didn't even want to hit your opponent out of the range where you could actively kill them, so you had to literally only be going for a grab, because hitting anything else would actually be putting you in a worse spot. Sometimes if you had too much rage, which is the bonus knockback you get from being at high percent yourself, you would actually purposely jump off the stage and kill yourself to get a new stock without rage so you could ding-dong them. Also, these confirmed kill some characters at like 60%, and in a rule set with two stocks, getting to 60 twice, then just getting grabbed, it just felt like crap for that being the whole game. Also, a lot of stages have different size blast zones, so if your opponent counterpicked you to Town and City, or God forbid, Halberd, which was legal in the competitive of this game sometimes, you could die like 30. <laughs> you didn't feel particularly outplayed. I mean, it wasn't overpowered, but it just wasn't fun at all to play against. And the way to beat it was to cap the heavies out until you either gave them too much rage or until you got hit out of their range Someone with a stray there. hit. And it wasn't fun for anyone involved. Oop, oh, catches him. Yeah. Up. Yep. See ya. Bye. Okay. <sighs> Alright, Zach taking game that one was, like he did last time. That was an exciting ending. He, he grabbed him. So yeah, deadly kill confirms. Not as elegant of a solution as it might first appear. So let's try something else. Now here's something that you might not have considered before, but it's actually already in the game and it's turned on by default. And that's items! Items are just a huge part of the casual game, but they're generally too chaotic for anyone to really bother discussing them in terms of balance. But here we are. Instead of talking about buffing heavies in competitive, I'm talking about how items kind of nerf them in casual. Items are bad for heavies. Not only are they easier to hit, but heavies are also typically quite slow, so you won't be able to run over to an extremely high value item as quickly as to many other characters. If a Master Ball or an Assist Trophy spawns while you're getting punted around, as heavies tend to do a lot of, you're basically cursed to remain in the casual blender for the rest of your life. Your low mobility also makes it a lot harder to avoid any of this stuff, from, you know, Pokemon to bombs and even Final Smashes, and with items turned on, heavies can be kinda bad. So they could be just overall generally buffed and it would probably be okay. The problem arises is when you want to dip your feet into being a little bit sweaty and then you turn items off. Again, balance is pretty hard to work out in this chaos, but I thought that this was at least worth a mention. Now there is one heavy in Smash Ultimate that is actually pretty good. He's so good actually that some people actually want to ban him. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it, it's Kazuya Mishima. Sitting as the 8th heaviest character, he's definitely on the dense side, but to me, he doesn't really capture the spirit of being a heavy. Sure, he's heavier than Wario and Ike and Ridley, but so is Samus. 
You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of heavy. What? Kaz isn't particularly big, and he has a lot of very fast combo moves. If this shit is how you make heavies viable, I don't think I like heavies anymore. You know, at least with a Ding Dong, they had to get you to 60% before they could kill you. Kazuya's combo game is so good that he can often kill you from 0% if he just hits you in the right spot, so... It's not really a good solution either, in my opinion. Kazuya just doesn't capture the spirit of being a heavy, so I'll be counting this solution out as not a very good one. Okay, that was like five minutes complaining, but uh, let's talk about what I would do if I had the power to buff these heavies. Now, there is one notable heavy in Smash Ultimate that I do like a lot and is actually in a pretty good spot competitively, and that's of course Incineroar. Incineroar is like Ganondorf if the developers had a shred of respect for him. For the most part, he has the same weaknesses of heavies, but they aren't crippling if you know how to use him well. Incineroar's counter, Revenge, is pure genius. The idea of powering up is great, and it means people can't just mash their fake combos on you with impunity. And it means people have to think twice before they just spam projectiles at you. And you can get rid of an Incineroar's power-up if you go up and grab them, where you have to go in on him and stop camping. Also, these powered-up moves lead to some hilarious moments, and it makes some people play so scared that they just make the worst decisions I've ever seen. It's so fun to watch people actually respect a heavy for once. You feel scary, like a final boss. Another thing Incineroar does that most heavies fail at is he has the ability to mix up his recovery. His recovery is still pretty bad, but being able to side B and up B without going into special fall where you tumble opens up a lot of new options. You can actually go high without, you know, instantly dying. And you can go for some more different angles that make you less predictable and therefore a little bit harder to kill. Incineroar also has the blessing of a good out of shield Nair that comes out quickly and hits all around him at once. So between that and his neutral B, you have good ways of getting people off you. Just the side B itself is a microcosm for the character itself. If you don't know how to use it, it's bad. But if you know how to use it well, it's extremely powerful. What Incineroar does is he gives you one or two moves that help counter playstyles that typically just destroy heavies. And if you're a casual player, you're not gonna know about Nair out of shield. The big funny cat is just that, the big funny cat. But these small additions make a huge impact on competitive viability and overall fun when you get a little bit sweaty. Just giving a heavy at least one decent option for a tough situation makes them so much more fun to play. Bowser, for example, also has a good out of shield move up B. And you could argue that it's pretty annoying to fight, but it's by no means overpowered because it's so laggy. And it means that you at least have to think before you mash on him. If I were doing a rework of Ganondorf, my favorite heavy, I would look to find a solution to A, getting spammer projectiles, B, getting your shield mashed on, and C, poor recovery. All in ways that don't make him much better in casual play, if at all. First, projectile spam. Now, I'm not the only one that's ever come up with this, but I feel like down B reflecting projectiles would be pretty fun. This move closes the gap, but it's extremely punishable on shield and often is very predictable. Now, sometimes it goes through small projectiles as it is, but it's not very consistent and it depends on how strong these projectiles are. There are a few ways this could be implemented. It could be a straight up reflector, which would be very powerful, but they've put reflectors on DLC characters kicks for no real adequately explained reason, so I don't really see this being too much of a problem. If it was overpowered in casual play, you could go for the deflector angle, which is like Pit's side B. Deflector projectiles, not to be confused with reflector projectiles, don't actually become, you know, yours, and they go off at a weird angle, so it's strictly a defensive tool. The final idea would be to make down B just delete projectiles without stopping Ganon. Like I said, this already happens sometimes, but you just need to increase the power of the projectile needed to stop Ganon. Unfortunately, I can't really playtest these changes, so I can't tell you which solution would feel the most balanced, but it is a very high commitment move, similar to Incineroar's Revenge, so you can't just throw it out constantly, and I can't see it be too overwhelmingly powerful. Secondly, having people mash on your shield. And this is pretty simple, I just give Ganon one faster out of shield move. I feel like the most balanced option for this one would be lowering the startup time for the up B. Again, this move is extremely high commitment. If you miss it, you probably die, and it doesn't hit behind you, so you're going to need to know how to do reverse up Bs out of shield if someone is behind you, which I'm going to go ahead and say that most casual players do not know how to do because I basically don't know how to do it, and I've played this game for years. While this move is currently Ganon's fastest out of shield option already, 
It's still very slow compared to most other characters, and if you change the 14 frames of startup to say 8, it's going to be roughly on par with Incineroar's Nair in terms of speed, but it's going to be stronger and much riskier. You would have to respect a good Ganon shield a lot more, and this wouldn't affect casual play, like I said, at all. And finally, helping his awful recovery. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do here, but I think the trick is to not necessarily buff the recovery, but to just make him have more options to mix it up. For example, in melee, Ganondorf could jump, down B, and then jump again. Now, I'm pretty sure this was a bug, and it didn't actually make him go a lot further, but it was a mix-up. There's of course the obvious don't have side B put in this special fall, which would mean you could use that at any point as a mix-up in your recovery instead of just at the very end. There's also the classic idea I've heard many times from other people of giving Ganondorf the ability to float midair, kind of like he does in Ocarina of Time. To make this just a mix-up tool instead of straight up making him just fly back to the stage, I'd probably make it so he can barely move while floating, if at all. But then you could at least air stall and hopefully avoid some attacks. Having a bad recovery is one thing, but having a bad recovery and no mix-ups is an absolute death sentence, and this alleviates this just a little bit. This new Ganondorf upgraded would still be bad, I'm sure of it, but it would be less frustrating to play against good players and more matchups would feel like you have at least some counterplay. Now I could go ahead and apply this logic to every heavy in the game, but I'll leave that for another day. You get my point. Just add a very thinly veiled counterplay move and bam, you might be just viable. Incineroar has actually had some amazing results recently at a top level, so it does go to show. People love watching these heavies blast people at top level. And it's also great to see heavies getting comboed themselves. Having a diverse meta with heavies as well as fast characters would improve the viewing experience for tournaments a lot, in my opinion. And I hope that old heavies get reworked in the future so we can get more characters like Incineroar and we can solve the Smash Bros. heavies problem.